Hello, Internet, and welcome to episode 13. No, we're on 14. God damn it. Leave it in. Keep going. Okay. I'll leave it in. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, episode 14 of Brain Drizzle Podcast. This week, we are actually pre recording an intro like some kind of professional podcasters because we had a interview with Anthony Evans and Kyle Taylor of the Glowing Plant Kickstarter Project. <laughs> So let's go and listen to that. Woohoo! Aren't you guys stoked? And roll them! Today we are with Anthony Evans and Kyle Taylor, two of the people behind the Glowing Plants Kickstarter project. For those who aren't familiar, why don't you give us a quick rundown of your project? It's pretty simple, really. We're looking to raise money on, on Kickstarter to make a glowing plant. The long-term vision is potentially to really find and improve on bioluminescence to make something that's, that's naturally glowing. But really, what we're trying to do here is educate people and inspire them about what they can do with synthetic biology and, and get people to get involved and, and participate. That's really cool. And now you've already reached your initial goal, and you're shooting for a, a stretch goal. Now, the initial goal was producing glowing Arabidopsis plants, which is a common lab plant model. So why don't you tell us about your stretch goal? Yeah, the stretch goal is to make a glowing rose. So we think that, that would be cool. I think that the strongest thing that has come from backers in the early days is the desire to see a bigger plant. The initial extra funds will be raised up to the 400k will really go towards making the Arabidopsis brighter. Uh, there's a lot of things. I'll let, I'll let Kyle tell you about what we're going to do to, to do that. But once once we get there, then we want to start putting it in bigger plants and a rose. You know, it will be cool. It's, it's something that, that doesn't you know, pollinate so much. Most roses can grow through, through cloning. So it's a pretty safe thing to have out there in the ecosystem. Um, but let, let me tell Kyle about, tell you about what we're going to do to try and make the plant brighter. Yeah, so uh, even though it's actually quite simple, technically it's still pretty challenging. And so we wanted to make it as easy as we can for ourselves, uh, at least initially, and work with Arabidopsis, which has a lot of tools um, and techniques that have been well established by uh, other molecular biologists. So you got to get work that out as best we can um, in Arabidopsis. So what we're planning on doing um, a couple of strategies. One, putting it into so plant cells um, being eukaryotic. They have a nuclear genome and then um, an extra nuclear genome in chloroplast plastic. One strategy will be taking the bacterial genes that uh, make a bacteria glow uh, and put those in the chloroplast. Um, and then a little bit more challenging, but uh, potentially more interesting aspect will be taking those bacterial genes, tearing them apart, and then reordering them in a way that the plant nucleus, the nuclear genome, will be able to read. I see. Now, you're working with bacteria-based bioluminescence. So in the future, will you look to other sources to get different colors or intensities? Or are you just going to try and modify existing bacterial bioluminescence? So initially, we'll be focusing on the bacterial bioluminescence. So the bioluminescence works via like a two-system approach. Um, you have a luciferase, which is the protein enzyme that then uses the luciferin, which is a small molecule, as the fuel to basically generate the light. The problem with most systems is the biosynthetic pathway, or the genes needed to make the small molecule luciferin, aren't known. The primary systems in which both the luciferase enzymes, the genes, and the luciferin genes are known are bacterial. That's what we're focusing on that initially. I see. If you reach your stretch goal, you're going to work on a rose. Will it glow red or will it grow the sort of classical bioluminescent green? I think initially it will probably be the classic bioluminescent green, but we have some interesting strategies in using other fluorescent proteins to potentially shift the wavelength. That's interesting. You are working with Arabidopsis and this obviously luciferin, luciferase system. So to make it brighter is the idea to just up the production of those two compounds in some way? Um, yes, initially that's the goal. Long term, there could be potential for kind of optimizing the plant itself. I mean, so Mother Nature has had, you know, a good long while to optimize bioluminescence in the bacteria and other organisms. And it may take, it probably will take um, a while to really boost up bioluminescence to kind of engineer the plants in whole to basically be able to shunt um, resources towards bioluminescence as opposed to what it's doing now. Oh yeah, that's something I wanted to ask you about because, I mean, a lot of people are concerned about introducing GM plants into the wild, but obviously this bioluminescent mechanism will have some sort of metabolic toll on the plant itself. 
Do you have any idea, like, how much extra nutrition or energy it would need? Up to, our plant will be less than this, but I think theoretical calculations, the University of Cambridge, IGEM 2010 did, team did some calculations on this, and they calculated that if we want to get a bush or a tree to produce as much light as a street lamp, that it would need about 0.02% of its energy that, that it creates during the day with photosynthesis to be converted into light at night. And obviously the light production is very efficient because it's a chemical reaction rather than a thermo reaction. And that, that to us seems, seems quite unreasonable. Well, that really doesn't seem like a big price to pay for bioluminescence. And something else I, I wondered, if it's producing light, does it get some of that energy back by photosynthesizing its own product? That is a fantastic question, presumably a little bit. Um, and those will be things that we have to kind of play around with, right? So we may need to like shift the wavelength a little bit towards a spectrum or color that uh, is less absorbed by the plant to kind of really boost. Um, that's a big question that we're trying to uh, ask with this as well. But Typically, a plant only absorbs about six percent of the light sunlight that passes through it. So, I don't think it's gonna, you know, it might it might dim us by six percent, but it's not gonna have a big effect. On it. That's true. That's true. I know it's hard to estimate these kind of things, but glowing bushes and glowing trees and you know glowing roses. How long term do you think that project is? So, I think it's. I mean, again, it's hard to say, um, but one of the exciting things about the way we're approaching it is by making things uh, open source um, and available to others is rather than having to do experiments necessarily sequential, we can be done in parallel. If people get interested, people get excited and learn the techniques and, and stuff and the way in which it's done on their own, they can then potentially do experiments in parallel and potentially make it happen sooner rather than later. It's a big question. And uh, actually, one of your rewards for donating 250 is a maker kit. How many of those have been in the work? How many have donated to that level? Check for you. It's about 50 this morning. Oh, that's, 54. That's really, that's really awesome. A lot of uh, potentially light-producing plants. I have to wonder, you know, since there's going to be a potentially 54 people making things like these, and you guys are talking about rose bushes and trees and all that kind of stuff, what happens if, like, some of these plants get loose in the wild and, let's say, grow all the way down to Mexico and end up around some poinsettias, creating enough light to disrupt their light-dark cycle so the poinsettias, you know, colored uh, leaves don't, their bracts don't bract out, and then they die? This is a pretty low risk, I think, for us. So I, I think there's a, there's a few points about this. One, this plant that we're transforming is not native to America and will not survive very well in the wild. You know, it likes to really thrive. It likes nice short days and it likes to not get too hot. So certainly down in Mexico, that's above 25 degrees in the summer, these things are going to be dead. So we're not, we're not very worried about them like spreading out of control. I think the important thing to remember between the difference between our plant and other plants you know, a lot of genetic engineered plants are being bred for extreme survivability, for herbicide or pesticide resistance, or like ability to outcompete other plants. We are actually, in fact, engineering something with the opposite effect. You know, there's going to be a metabolic cost on the plant, which means that actually it's got a weakness against other plants in the environment, rather than an easy ability to outcompete. And that, that, that makes it somewhat safer. So, in other words, the plant could almost be considered to be ultra domesticated, and that it needs humans for its survival, kind of like uh, domestic cows. Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, now, something I was wondering, oh, okay. so what sort of initially inspired you to do this project, particularly Anthony, because on your bio on the page, you don't have a, a biology background. So what made you think, okay, bioluminescent plants are a thing. Let's run with this. I went to Singularity University and they did this course where we did a GFP transformation of a bacteria and I kind of learned the stuff that I thought was super rocket science was actually becoming available to normal people and that just got me really, really excited and fascinated. And I kind of been looking for something to do. I, I met Omri at a, or I, I caught up with Omri at a lunch about in August and he was saying I want to do this project and I was looking for a new project and so we just sort of I started working on it. I came to BioCurious, met up with, with Kyle and the other guys from the Bioluminescent group, and really from there, just, you know, it's, it's a cool project, right? Who doesn't want glowing plants, right? Yeah, uh, sort of what I'm wondering is if down the road 
some biomassive plants do get out. Is that really such a bad thing? <laughs> Honestly, I have trouble being against the idea, even if all the even if like a quarter of the poinsettias go puff. I hate poinsettias anyway. <laughs> anyway. I hate them so much that I've learned everything I can about them. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I love these. I mean, I don't think I don't think there's much risk of our plants going wild and like you know that being low everywhere. We're, we're, we're being very cautious about this. Bit. And even if they were, I mean, it's not like they'd be hard to find, so you could pull them back out of the ground. <laughs> you just go out at night, right? That would make weedy fun. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, that, that that would be like a fun Easter egg hunt. Oh yes. <laughs> Find the glowing plants. You can get tourists to do it. <laughs> Mexico is saved. Well, the, the Mexican poinsettias are saved. Oh, well, maybe that's it. You have any other questions? Or? Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It was awesome to talk to you, and obviously we will be linking uh, your page in the description of the podcast. So hopefully you reach that stretch goal, and then maybe down the road we'll, we'll do another interview when you're climbing glowing oaks and stuff. Cool. Yeah, just send us an email when it's done, and you know we can be online and send some comments in the podcast or something. Awesome. Ah, definitely. Uh, I do have one more question, more like a request. When you send out those seeds, I suggest sending them in an envelope and not a package because I'd be pretty ticked off if that thing got nicked off the porch. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was great talking to you guys. Thank you so much for going through the trouble of moving your computer. Thank you. Um, thank you. Have a good evening. See you around uh, in a little while, hopefully. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Well, that was fucking awesome. Oh, wasn't that nice? Now, I'll tell you what, yeah. I'm, s I'm serious about that. Uh, I'm serious about not getting anything stolen off my porch. Uh, one time... Like, before I lived here, there was, like, a drummer who lived here. He got a $500 symbol stolen off of this porch. Just, like, minutes within when it was dropped off by UPS. That thing was gone. <laughs> <laughs> who, who steals that? Like, people just, they see a package and they take it just in case it's worth something. My sister, she got the first season of Glee stolen off the porch. She was pretty pissed about that. Well, I mean, yeah, I think that's good for her. I think. <laughs> she she loves that show. She lo does love that show a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Teaches her for buying media. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> different topic. <laughs> yeah, man. I just imagine. It's like, who, what are people going to do with, like, a drum symbol? I mean, it's 500 bucks, but it's, like, useless to them. They're not going to give them shit for it if they try to pawn it. Well, I'm... maybe they're an aspiring drummer slash thief. <laughs> no, or or they're just a bunch of crackheads. In fact, they probably a bunch of crackheads, and they got a bunch of crack, put it on top of this freaking symbol, stuck an acetylene torch underneath it, and started smoking all the crack out of some didgerdoos. <laughs> we got off the rails just right out of the gate. I was holding it in, man. I was holding it in through all of that, man. <laughs> But no, those, uh, those guys way, were pretty I did not pretty get cool. on them about not shipping to Canada, but luckily uh, they're shipping to you, and you're going you're gonna to send me to have the seeds, right? If crackheads don't steal them, yes. Okay, barring the crackheads, I'm going to have the seeds, you're going to have seeds. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. By the way, if you do contribute and get seeds or plants or whatever, it seems like they're expecting to have a commercially available product by May of next year. Awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, it'll be a while. You'll forget that you ever did, and then you'll, like, get these seeds, and you'll be like, what the hell? Oh, my God! This is awesome! No, you don't understand! These seeds glow in the dark! And your roommate's gonna be like, what are you smoking? I don't have a roommate. I'm alone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well. Anyways, um, so <laughs> once we figure out the timestamp after the crackhead part, I'm gonna send them the link to this, because I have some ideas. Oh, yeah? What What are your ideas? One, blue and red uh, pine trees for Christmas. Blue and red? I mean, green and red. I was about to say, you guys do a fucked up in Canada. <laughs> now, green and red glowing Christmas trees. Like, how awesome would that be? Ooh, it get, like, some kind of pine tree that um, has, like, little pine cones on it that glow. I'm not sure pine cones could glow, because aren't the cones dead? Well, I mean, it's just like if they're budding live ones. 
Maybe, yeah. Okay. Or have it so that it's just the new growth that glows. Basically, I'm trying to think of something that would, like, give it the effect of being a pre-lit Christmas tree, you know? Mm, maybe. Like, only parts of it glowing. But if the whole thing glowed, that'd be kind of cool, too. It'd be like I mean, a... it's, it's not going to be super bright, so, I mean, like, having, like, streams of red and green through a, a glowing Christmas tree. Like, come on, are you really going to be picky with a glowing Christmas tree? <laughs> That's a good point. You, you make a very good point. I just, I want to go bigger. I don't want to have people to end up spending, like, thousands of freaking dollars on something that barely glows at all, because you know that that's what they would charge. <laughs> Those capitalist pigs. That we just interviewed. Thank you, by the way, if you're listening. No, not oh. them. Not them. The pe- the company that sells the glowing Christmas trees. I doubt it's going... I, I mean, how often does the person who actually makes the tech be the one who actually sells it? No, it's some company. By the way, as soon as I get the seeds, I'm figuring out how to make a glowing Christmas tree. Hell yeah. So I'm going to be the capitalist pig, and so I'm excited about that. In which case, start paying me for these when you get rich, man. Please? Will do. (laughs) Alright, I'm on board. (laughs) Okay, idea number two. Yeah. Uh, Glowing fruit of any kind, really. I mean, that'd be awesome. Imagine a rave that's actually healthy for you. <laughs> yeah, while you're making it glow, have it produce the drugs too. <laughs> Just the weirdest banana ever. <laughs> oh god. Just like a rave that's healthy for you. <laughs> have a rave during the breakfast with glowing fruit. You can't have a rave in the morning, you can't see the glowing. <laughs> Get your kids up at 3 a.m. for breakfast. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, good stuff. Good stuff. By the way, Anthony and Kyle, if you use any of the ideas, I'll uh, send you my address for the royalty checks. Uh, what else? <laughs> oh, parks with pathways in the grass and just the grass on the pathway is bioluminescent. So during the day, it looks like just grass, but at night there are paths that go low. Ah, oh, cool. Or like have like uh, little patches of clover grow in the shape of uh, footprints. Exactly. That'd be awesome. Oh, so, I could dig that. Yeah, I mean, so it's I'd say at the number three, I think. Yeah, three. Number four. I'm just full of these. Figure out how to make like a self-sustaining micro ecosystem, like with algae and then bacteria and fungus. Like balance it all out, and mm. then engineer everything to glow. So it's like an infinite lamp. Yeah, and put those in like balls and stick them in cities. Exactly. Nice. Also, you can even mix like red, yellow, and blue bioluminescence and try and get white light. That'd be neat. Mm-hmm. It'd be like those uh, glowing ball things in the uh, Lady of the Green Kirtle's Kingdom and the Silver Chair. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a book reference. <laughs> for those of you who were wondering. Alright, idea number five. Bioluminescent algae lava lamp. Boom. Shakalaka. For Shaka. hippies that want to be really green, because it wouldn't use any electricity... Hell yes. That would sell so much with hippies. Oh man, I, I would like hang them up all around my freaking micro house. But like imagine, get all the awesomeness of a lava lamp with no electricity. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Take it camping. So that when I appreciate nature in the woods, <laughs> I have something cool to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Just follow it up. See nature? This is how you fucking do it. <laughs> I'm appreciating... Th- I'm out in nature. Appreciating the shit out of nature. With my genetic engineered algae. Yeah. Uh, so I think these are all really awesome ideas. And also, they're selling maker kits. So if any investors want to just give us money, that would be cool too. <laughs> Jeez. Just... Rub and forth. That was a joke, by the way. God. <laughs> yes. Totally was. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, like, seriously, like, you can, like, give them, like, 250 bucks, and they will send you a kit where you just, like, go through and you make your own glowing plant. I'm pretty sure the plasmids that 
come with the agrobacterium are uh, designed for arabidopsis. Uh, still, though, I mean, that's like, that is some next level shit. When I was a kid looking at those toy science kits that you get 10 year olds, dude, I, I would have, like, lost my shit over something like that. And I'm still losing my shit over it right now. I just really wish that I had the green despair to give them. But I'm just kind of settle for um, ready made seeds getting mailed to me sometime next year. Yeah, I mean, I think it's still awesome, and I might invest in it later down the road if I like, actually have any ability to make my own engineered plants. That would be awesome. I know, I'm pretty stoked about it. You know, I fucking killed algae with plant food somehow. What? <laughs> Write a paper about it. <laughs> Describe how this happened. So, uh, I used I used miracle grow, which may not have been the best thing. <laughs> Probably not. So I'm thinking whatever makes it bright blue probably kills the algae. Dude, way too much nitrogen. <laughs> miracle Grow is pretty much just nitrogen. <laughs> well, so I have a different kind of fertilizer, and I'm going to try growing some algae again. They, and if you do use Miracle, don't put that much in it. <laughs> well, I tried diluting it. You didn't dilute it enough. <laughs> Evidently. Did you just, like, pour the whole thing in there? <laughs> No, it's like a very faint blue color. You're, okay, the miracle Grow. you're supposed to use like a tablespoon and put it in your water and like water the whole fucking house with it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to use that shit sparingly. I have never grown algae before, so give me a break. And the, the WikiHow instructions were very unclear. Okay, if WikiHow person, if you're listening to this right now, I think he has a point. <laughs> I just said, add water and algae and plant food. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, yeah, Kyle, if you want to give me some tips, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> you're just, like, talking at them even though they're gone. <laughs> well, I'm hoping they'll listen to this. Although probably not, because we're fucking retarded. But, oh well. The, the fans are gonna like this. This is pretty much just for the fans. Yeah, but seriously, it is a pretty awesome project. I'm, I, I was stoked to get the interview with them. Oh god, I was too. I just wish I, I just wish they had more time. Yeah, oh well. They're busy engineering plants and stuff. It's like, sorry, we're in a lab full of people. <laughs> <laughs> I almost fangirled out right then. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Mm. I love laboratories. Never been in one. <laughs> I know. God, we are such science groupies. I just realized that. We are like science otakus. <laughs> we really are. <laughs> Kyle and Anthony, we love you long time. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, I think that's I think that's about as much as I can take. Yeah, okay, we're going to sign out. If Anthony and Kyle are still listening to this segment of the podcast... Thank you. Why to be creepy? Thank you and sorry. I think. Th thanks for taking the time to listen to us, and also for the fans. Double thank you, guys. I know there's some of you that who do listen to these things all the way through, and that actually means a lot to us that you take the yeah, time. Yeah, we had like an Easter egg. Well, not an Easter egg. We asked a question at the end, and like almost mm -hmm. every comment on the last podcast was answering the question at the end. So I'm like, hee hee. It filled me with glee. Okay, here's your new question. What did what did you guys fill me with? Oh wait, no. Oh god damn <laughs> You're leaving that fucking in. You're leaving that in. <laughs> oh, crap, I guess I have to. You oh, do. Oh, you have to give them a real question then. Okay, uh what plant would you genetically engineered glow and what color or colors would it be? Didn't you already ask something like that at some point? Well, we asked them what their favorite color was last week. All right, um, and but yeah. But now it's, it's plant, and you can pick multiple colors to engineer things. Yeah, like seriously, you know what I would do? I would get like a weeping willow. I'd get like just the uh, branches, the branches that are hanging down to glow. I don't know, cause something on the white side of the of the classical bioluminescent color. Mm. I think that would look badass. Yeah. Or and... maybe some, maybe kind of a bluish tint. Yeah, blue know. would be good. Oh no no wait 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 lavender, pale lavender. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if there's a purple, but I guess you could try and combine like blue and red. Yeah yeah maybe. 
I don't know. Yeah. Oh, well, I think that's it. And also, answer, answer her question. No. There, there is no question. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm, I'm doing it so, so you can't edit it out. Because if you're keeping that shitty intro I did, you're keeping this in. Yeah, fair, fair, fair is fair. Bye.